Just like today, back in the 1700s, the busiest trading areas of most British cities also had a high proportion of coffee houses. But the growth and popularity of coffee coincided with one of the darkest episodes in Britain's history. This is a Jamaica wine house, but it used to be called the Jamaica Coffee House. At one time, coffee houses were very popular across the entire country, and people would go there to do business. They go there to invest in coffee, they go there to invest in sugar, they go to invest in people, and that's where they conduct their business. The question to ask yourself is, in your local area, are there any street names or buildings that have an African or Caribbean connection as far as their name's concerned? Around the financial or market areas of any town or city, you might still find evidence of those early coffee houses. This is evidence of one in London. It's called Lloyd's Coffee House. There's many connections between Lloyd's Coffee House and African history. Lloyd's Coffee House used to be the headquarters for what is now Lloyd's of London, a massive insurance company. But Lloyd's of London began insuring slave ships. With the growth and popularity of coffee houses, there also came a demand for sugar and tobacco, and the British economic power base came to rely on the triangular trade. The triangular trade was made up of three journeys, the outward passage from Europe to Africa carrying manufactured goods, the middle passage from Africa carrying African captives who would be forced to work as slaves on the coffee and sugar plantations in the Caribbean and the Americas, and the final journey from the British-owned plantations in the Caribbean and the Americas sending coffee, sugar and tobacco back home. I'm here in the Docklands area of London. This particular dock is called the West India Dock and it was built to handle a trade that came from the West Indies. The trade involved things like sugar, coffee, tobacco, and many other tropical products that helped to make Britain rich using African labour. Docklands, rivers or canals are often rich hunting grounds for evidence of trading connections with Africa and the Caribbean. 